Hello guys, welcome back to Seven Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily Seven Engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the bending stresses in beam. In this lecture, we are going to find out the bending stresses in two different types of the beam. There is the simply supported beam on the left side and the cantilever beam on the right side. So we have to find that how we can calculate the bending stresses in such two types of the beams. So let's start with the simply supported beam. We can see here that this beam has been supported only at the two ends. One here is the hinge provided at the left side of the beam and the roll support provided at the right side of the beam so which makes the simply supported beam. If we load this beam with any uniformly distributed load of Q so due to this load the beam will show deflection like in this way and due to the due to the no support provided here and this beam we can see here that the mix that this beam will show the maximum deflection at the middle of the beam which we call as the L by 2. If this is the total length is L so at the L by 2 we will have the maximum deflection or we can call that the beam is subjected to the maximum bending stresses. So this will this point will be the critical point for this beam with the uniformly distributed load. So if we draw if you see here so due to the deflection this beam will show compression at the top and while the tension at the bottom so if you look into the cross section of this beam if this let's suppose this is a a section a a and we want to draw its section and let's suppose this is the neutral axis is the neutral axis for this beam and this is a rectangular type of beam so we will have compression at the top this section will be compressed while the bottom section this will be in tension so we can call the distance the, this section about the neutral axis will be in compression and this section below the neutral axis will be in tension so due to which the concrete is weak in tension so what we do we provide here the reinforcement at the bottom of the beam so to increase the tensile capacity of the concrete beam. So now this beam is called as the reinforced concrete beam because we reinforce with the steel bars to increase the capacity of this beam. So now we have two different types of the stresses. One is called the compressor stresses at the top of this beam section and one is called as the tensile stresses at the bottom of the section. So the bending stresses and beam may have bending stresses while in bending we have two different types of the stresses. One is called as the compressor stresses and one is called as the tensile stresses. In bending we always have two different types. The first, the one portion will be compressed while the other portion will be in tension. So bending stresses have two further types. So if you look to this beam cross section, if I draw this reference line, so I can draw it here like this way, that this whole portion is compressed so I can write it as sigma with C it means that these stresses are compressive stresses and similarly the bottom portion is in tension so we have tensile stresses here at the bottom of the beam so these are called as the sigma with T T means that these are now tensile stresses and we have maximum tensile stresses at the extreme at the extreme bottom of the beam and we have maximum compressive stresses at the extreme top of the beam while this depth is mostly called as the C while C is called the distance from the neutral axis to the top of the beam or to the bottom of the beam we mostly call it C1 and this would be called as C2 so we have compressive stresses and tensile stresses now how to find these stresses which is which are basically the bending stresses. So we can find the compressor or tensile stresses by this formula sigma is equal to m c over i. Now m is called the bending moment. Bending moment for example we want to find the bending stresses at this point which is the center point which is the maximum bending moment. So this will be called as the maximum stresses in a beam. So for example this is my beam and let's suppose I draw the reference line for this beam. So 
the bending moment diagram for this beam will be like this way. This is the zero zero reference, and the upper value, the top value from the zero zero is called the positive bending moment, while the bottom value from this zero zero will be called as the negative bending moment. So this beam has only positive bending moment. So we call that this beam has positive bending moment, and we have maximum bending moment here at this point. And if you, if you want to find the bending stresses at the middle of the beam, which is the mid, which would be called is the maximum bending stresses, because we will have maximum bending moment. So the stresses depends on the moment value where we want to find out the stresses. For example, if, if you want to find out the stresses at this point, let's suppose it's a one point. So we have to find out the moment at, at this point and plugging the value of C. C is the distance from the center to the top of or uh, bottom of the beam and the moment of inertia of this beam and for this beam the moment of inertia is simply b h cube by 12 which is the, which is for a rectangular beam so putting all this value we can find the bending stresses for this type of beam so we call is that the compressor stresses will be equal to the m c over i while the tensile stresses will be also m c over i but with a negative sign because if one is positive we represent one is positive so the other is in opposite direction so sigma c will be equal to the minus of sigma c if we represent a t sigma t is equal to the minus sigma c it means the tensile stresses is negative of that of the compressor stresses now we can also simplify this equation if we in, we know that the c over i or the i over c the moment of inertia divided by the neutral axis distance we represented by S which is called as the section modulus so if we put this I over C here in place of the I over C we put it S which is section modulus so our equation will become sigma C will be equal to the M over S similarly sigma T will be equal to the minus M over S so we can find the compressor stresses at any point just by putting the moment value dividing by the section modulus of the beam while section modulus depend upon the two values which is i and c c is the moment of inertia and c is the distance from the neutral axis up to the exterior part of the beam now let's come to the cantilever beam this is in a cantilever beam with a fixed support at the left end so if i subject this beam to any uniformly distributed load of Q so now this beam will show deflection like in this way because there is no support here at this end so it will show here the maximum deflection at this while in simply supported beam there was no support at the middle so it shows maximum deflection here like in the middle point while for the cantilever beam the deflection is always maximum at the right end of the beam because there is no support if we draw the movement diagram for such beam, so if these, these are the reference lines similarly which I draw for the simply supported beam, so these are the reference line 0, 0. So it will show movement like in this way. Like if I draw with the red marker, so it will be like in this way. So this is this will be the moment diagram for this cantilever beam and it will show maximum bending moment here at this point. So we will have maximum moment here at this point at the support because the fixed support can resist moment. So now if I draw the cross section of this beam, this is the cross section. Let's suppose I want to draw the section here at this beam at this point BB. So in this case, if this is the neutral axis, so now the cantilever beam shows different behavior, not like the simply supported beam. So the upper portion, due to this load, the upper portion has been in tension, has been in tension, while the bottom portion has been compressed, due to which the reinforcement needed in the top section of the beam, while in the bottom we will have compression due to the load 
So due to load, we have tension in the top and top section of the beam, while at the bottom we have compression. So that's why in cantilever beam we always provide the reinforcement at the top of the beam, at the top of the beam section, while at the bottom we just place the two reinforcement as it needed according to the course. So in cantilever beam, if I draw here, this is the reference line. So we will have the we will have the tension here. In this case, we will have tension at the top. So we are represented by sigma t, while we will have compression at the bottom. Sigma c. So in cantilever beam, the behavior is quite opposite to that of the simply supported beam. And similarly, we can find the compressor stresses here. Sigma c is equal to the m c over i or m over s and sigma t which is the tension will be equal to the tensile stresses m c over i equal to minus m over s so um, if we know the moment at any point if let's suppose if we want to find the bending stresses here at this point of the beam at this point which is maybe in the second point so we will find the bending moment value here at this point we will put here the bending moment at this point and we will, we will put the C value which is from the center of the beam to the top of the beam C1 here and this is C2 and C2 value or C1 depends on the type of stresses and the moment of inertia of this beam which is a rectangular beam so we can also find the moment of inertia by this formula BH2 by 12 so plugging all this value we can find the compressor stresses at this point similar to find the tensile stresses Putting all these values, the moment value, where you want to find the stresses, the C value, and the R, you can find the tensile stresses at any point in the beam. But the general behavior of the cantilever beam is how that it is being in tension at the top while it is being compressed at the bottom. While in case of simply supported beam, it shows compression at the top while tension at the bottom. So accordingly, we have to provide the main reinforcement according to the behavior of the bending stresses. The tensile stresses must be resisted by the providing the reinforcement because concrete is weak in tension. So we always provide the steel bars where there is a tension at tensile stresses. Hope you guys understand that how to find the bending stresses in any bay. For DD7 engineering videos, please don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you for watching our video.